ever left back home? Uh, uh, I miss people, but I don't miss places. Prepare for takeoff, touchdown, Ben Gurion. Strict search, make sure nobody enter with bombs. Blue white flag for this birthright tour I'm on. Never mention three villages that the airport is on. Recent history buried, but it speaks to the sand. All Jews, law of return. I don't seem to understand a land without a people for people without a land. But I see a man standing with a key and a deed in his hand. Museum of the Holocaust, walking outside in the distance, all go throwing a Molotov. Houses burn with kerosene, mass graves couldn't bear the scene. It wasn't a pogrom, it was the ruins of their y'all seen. Shopping at the Kenya and Malha, built it on the back of the town and Malha. Wishing we could call it its name, appalled by the change. And now a mark of the chains is all that remains. My evil misses people, not places. Have you seen the towns with names of Arabic, the evil places? The policies of evil and racist. My family is coming from Zakaria village. In 1948, they were uprooted like most of the other Palestinian refugees, and they moved to toward the Ibrom area in that period. And when I heard the story, actually, from my mom, my family, they were like living with uh, in, uh, their house, my brother and my sister and my parents. And my mom, she, when they start bombing the area, and actually after they killed three people, three men from the village, in front of one of the women and her, her child, uh, they decided to close the house. My mom closed the house and she took the key with her and she moved to the mountain and they moved slowly, slowly until they find themselves in Hebron. And after that, they moved to the Hesha refugee camp where I was born near Bethlehem. So, Zakaria village right now it's, uh, exists there, just they changed the name. Instead to have Zakaria, it became Kfar Zakaria. So whenever I walk around Yafa, I think of my grandmother and her family and how they once walked around uh, that same place. My mother's neighborhood is in Manchia neighborhood, which has been completely flattened with the exception of two buildings, a mosque that settlers are trying to destroy and another building that was transformed into a museum for one of the main uh, Israeli te Zionist terrorist organizations, the Irgun. And so a lot of people from Jerusalem are experiencing even greater harassment uh, illegality, uh, what I call the, the, the continuing dispossession. That is, we cannot claim our hometown. In fact, my mother's passport, her, her hometown, Jerusalem, has been crossed out in black ink. My mother's birth, place of birth to this day on her passport, on every single piece of ID that she's ever had since they initially crossed out Jerusalem, is blank. Then sticking in between a hole in the bricks I'm feeling more than melancholy This used to be the Moroccan quarter Until we stopped them short And now they grandkids is the ones that storm my rocks and borders I ain't wanna play and I don't pray often So I'm a Walden While you making native sons feel like a stranger in their homeland Like James Baldwin This ain't about a Quran or a synagogue or mosque or Torah Colonizers break it into acres and dunums A race in the culture when they change hyper to hyper Change out for the Yafo The old city left to haunt Homers pronounced Homers we ate in the restaurant, next hit the discotheque Yes, we on the list of guests, Palestinians can't get in It's blatant disrespect, cops stop them for speaking their languages It's dangerous to repeat it when with history we disconnect I'm 
بالصلاح الدين وخان الهيل وصار مر خراب المدمنين سطاء الدم اشتغطي جرح اللي بسيل الدم يهود لوت كمان مشروع اللي يسم البدن وهي مش الاولى ولا الاخيرة ما احنا احنا البحر وهي السفينة بتجدف باتجاه شلال بيصارها ويمينها وهيك الهولي لان بتبطل هل لان <تصفيق> And clothes, set them in spreading like cancer and toxic sewage polluted the roads. Not full of checkpoints, I superimpose the truth and it shows. Village rooms overgrown with planted trees. Who'd have thought the desert bloomed with two which I can't believe it ain't environmental. Disguise and lies, extincting lives like manatees. Calling it a transfer, please. More like a catastrophe. Birthright towards the crew and them confuse them into moving in. Claim it's only names and words, but denying the root of them. How we've been abusing it. Our past never excusing them. 60 years since 48 and 40 since Jerusalem. My boy Shad. He wanted to visit us so badly He lied he's diabetic to see it for five seconds One, nine, four, rule the courts in the case Mom, you can't disconnect the people from the importance of place My Eva misses people, not places Has she seen a time when names are Arabic to evil places? The policies of evil and racist Deceitful and hateful She'll never be a people state with legal displacement <laughs> My mom's mom was killed when she was six and my mother was being raised along with about six other siblings with my grandfather in White River, Arizona. Um, my grandfather couldn't take care of them, he couldn't afford to. So his only option was to allow his kids to be removed from the home and placed um, through the Warren Placement Program in families that were outside of the state of Arizona. So my mom was raised in Burbank and went to high school there through uh, the academic year and was really removed from my grandfather who was a traditional Hopi medicine man, removed from her tribal community and her land base and um, from her language and I think had, this has had a phenomenal impact on my mother's life. She ended up running away from this home when she was about 17 and joined the American Indian Movement, uh, which really had a profound impact on her as a Native woman. But I, I, I know that her removal from the home had a, lot, a lasting impact in terms of her own personal growth and understanding of who she was and who she is as a Native person. And really, I think, left um, a hole in her identity which she filled through most of her life by abusing drugs and alcohol. So I think, you know, that that tie to you as a as an Indian person or as an indigenous person, the tie to land and, and culture and your own community and language are so critical to your understanding and, and your being. We moved from Puerto Rico to New York City when I was four years old. With my brother and my mother, we moved to Tompkins Projects with our grandmother for about a year or two. So my mom's got herself another apartment on Madison Avenue. We stayed there for about 10 years until the rent got raised and we couldn't afford to live there anymore, so we had to leave. We moved to another apartment on Putnam Avenue, which the same thing happened there. We had to move because of the um, rent got raised again. But after that, we got stuck into a shelter because we couldn't find an apartment. So we stood in the shelter for about half a year. And after that, we got our own apartment at Marcy Projects, which we were living good. We're still there now. And But while I'm living there, I see a lot of things around the neighborhood, like being built, like condos that no one can afford in the neighborhood, and even stores that no one can afford to shop in, in the neighborhoods. And that's making everybody in the neighborhood have to leave to find a neighborhood where they can support themselves and live in. I was born in Jerusalem and my parents raised me to love Israel unconditionally and uncritically. So when I grew up and I started discovering the stories of ethnic cleansing and colonization of Palestine that was involved in 
the creation of the State of Israel that had been hidden from me, my community, my family, my uh, parents threatened to disown me, to push me out, accused me of supporting terrorism. But the amazing thing is that as my mother started listening to the stories of injustice and oppression in Palestine that I started bringing home, she started to ask her own questions of these positions her community was taking. And um, a couple of years ago, when she was living in Jerusalem and I was working in Dehesha refugee camp, she agreed to cross through the Israeli military checkpoint and visit the camp. At the end of the tour that my friend took her on throughout the camp, my mother stopped and she started crying. And as I was hugging her, she said, I'm so sorry, Aura. I raised you wrong. I was ignorant. I didn't know. And it was so powerful for me that here was this woman in her mid-50s, the wife of a rabbi, a major figure in the Jewish community who was willing to open up her head and heart and listen to Palestinian voices and admit that she was wrong.